Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to our lesson today on the National Development Objectives and Strategies, Historical Review of the Dirk Period. In the previous non-plasma lesson, I hope you learned National Development Objectives and Strategies during the Monarchical Period. In our today's lesson, we will discuss National Development Objectives and Strategies during the Dirk period. Before we discuss the policies and strategies, let me give you a brief historical background to the period. In 1974, a revolution erupted in Ethiopia. The revolution resulted in the downfall of the monarchy and its replacement by a military government. This laid the foundation for the emergence of a command socialist economic system in Ethiopia. Before starting our today's discussion, I want you to describe a command economic system based on your previous lesson. Discuss the question with the students sitting next to you. You have two minutes. I hope you've answered the question correctly. If you have said as follows, then you are correct. Command economy is an economic system in which economic activities are coordinated and directed by the government through central planning. All decisions regarding production and distribution are determined by the state. The state owns all resources of the country on behalf of the society except labor. There is no private property. Students, that is how the Ethiopian economic system during the military regime could be described. The system lasted for about 17 years. It started in 1974 and ended in 1991. The socialist state took nationalization measures aimed at centralizing economic activities and restructuring Ethiopia's economy towards socialist philosophy. The socialist government had set various economic and development plans that were designed based on socialist philosophy. These economic planning and development and post-revolution period had four distinct phases. These are the nationalization measures that were taken from 1974 to 1978, 
the institutional formation or reform that took place from 1978 to 1980, the development campaign program that took place from 1980 to 1985, and the corporativization plan from 1985 to 1990. The nationalization phase started following the fall of the monarchy in 1974. It lasted until 1978. Students, I want you to write down the meaning of nationalization and give examples of the things that the Dirk government nationalized. Answer this individually. I'll give you three minutes. Did you answer the question? Good. If you have given the following answer, you've got the answer right. Nationalization refers to the change in the ownership of resources from private to government ownership. For example, the Dirk government nationalized resources and assets such as land, private factories, residential houses. Students, now let's discuss the economic performance during the nationalization phase. There was little economic growth during this phase. Gross domestic product increased at an average annual growth rate of 0.4%. This is because the nationalization measures and political instability caused economic dislocation in sectors such as agriculture and manufacturing. 
and the budget allocated to finance the civil war consumed large portions of the nation's resources. I hope you've understood the economic performance during the first phase. Now, let's move to the second phase, that is the institutional formation or reform. This phase covered the period between 1978 and 1980. During this period, the economy began to recover as government strengthened its power, implemented institutional reforms, and carried out a campaign known as Development Through Cooperation Campaign, also known as Zemecha. During the campaign, high school and university students and teachers were deployed to rural areas to construct residential houses for settlers, provided basic education service, and carried out other development activities. As mentioned earlier, the average growth in GDP during the 1974 to 78 planning period was 0.4%. In the second planning period that covered 1978 to 80, gross domestic product grew at an average annual growth rate of 5.7%. Furthermore, agricultural production increased at an average annual rate of 3.6% due to good weather. Manufacturing increased at an average annual rate of 18.9%. Students, I hope you've understood the economic performance during the second phase. Now, let's proceed to the third phase, in which annual development campaign programs were implemented in those five years starting from 1980 to 1985. During the third phase, the Dirk government had implemented various annual development campaign programs. However, the economic performance had slowed down. The growth of gross domestic product declined. Agricultural production was in crisis and manufacturing sector was also at a recession. Students, what do you think are the factors that contributed to low economic performance during the development campaign program? I want you to discuss this question with the students sitting next to you. You have three minutes.
I am sure you have discussed the question. And now, let me give you the answer so that you can compare it with your answer. The factors that contributed for low economic performance during the development campaign program phase are widespread drought all over the country, manufacturing sector stagnated as agricultural inputs declined, lack of foreign exchange and declining investment, and high rise in defense expenditure. Students, now we are left with the last phase of economic and development plan under the DERG regime, which is the cooperativization plan phase. Now, let's move to our discussion on cooperativization plan of the DERG government that covered the period from 1985 to 1990. During this period, the government prepared a 10-year perspective plan for the period 1984 to 1994. The aim of the 10-year perspective plan was to develop agriculture, to enhance export, and to improve the quality of livestock. To achieve these aims, strategies such as the establishment of cooperatives and state farms were adopted. As a result, agriculture and manufacturing sectors had started to grow. Gross domestic product increased at an average annual rate of 5%. However, the persistent effects of the previous drought of 1984-85 to 85 had weakened these achievements and contributed to the stagnation of the overall economic performance. For example, the 1984-85 drought had claimed the lives of people, animals, and caused a crisis to the economy and human life. Students, in today's lesson, we have reviewed the national development objectives and strategies during the Derg regime. We discussed that there were four distinct economic and development plan during the Derg period. These were the nationalization measures in the period 1974 to 1978, the institutional formation in the period 1978 to 1980, the development campaign program in the period 1980 to 1985, and cooperativization plan in the period 1985 to 1990. We have seen that the economic performance during each phase has shown variations due to various factors that affected economic performance during each phase. This brings us to the end of today's lesson. In our next lesson, we will discuss the National Development Plan of the EPRDF government. Until then, goodbye teacher, goodbye students.